Hello everyone, Time to Grind here, and today I wanted to talk about Monster Crown. And Monster Crown is a really dark and really awesome version of, like, Pokemon that gives me something I have always wanted since I first started playing Pokemon back in the day. And before we get into this review, I do just want to let you guys know that I did get an early review copy of Monster Crown in order to make a review for you guys. I never let that influence my reviews, I just like staying super transparent and letting you guys know. But either way, let's just start talking about Monster Crown. So Monster Crown is a new game that just came out in Early Access that first of all looks a lot like a very retro GBA Pokemon game, but with like modern day graphics. And it's really pretty because it is styled like one of those old GBA games, but that doesn't mean it looks bad. The colors are really vibrant and they really pop out. Like there's wind blowing effects that look really cool sometimes. And sometimes it'll play these like full pixel art graphics that just are jaw dropping you know, when they do show up. And so in a nutshell, Monster Crown is pretty similar to the old Pokemon games, but it's way more difficult, and more importantly to me anyways, it is way more dark than Pokemon. Instead of being a world where Pokemon and people coexist, in Monster Crown, monsters rule the world and can murder humans if you, like, go in the wild. And there are obviously cities and towns and kingdoms that exist in the world, but it isn't like a happy, peaceful place where, you know, the monsters and the people just coexist always happily. And in fact, you don't catch monsters in this world. Instead, you make packs with them, and if you aren't like a higher level than the wild monsters, they'll literally just scoff at you and continue killing you. And if you do convince them to work with you, then it kind of works like catching them and they'll fight on your side. And this game does not mess around with showing you how much of a monster-controlled world this is. I don't want to spoil too much of the surprises and story of this game because to me that's one of the biggest draws of the game. But really, really early on in the game you hear people saying like there's some monster in the water that only like a strong tamer should go after. And so obviously, like I would in any other monster tamer, I checked it out and it was just like a level 30 monster that just started one-shotting all of my like level 5 monsters at the time, and you don't know that until you actually start a fight with it. Also, a little later in the game, there are some NPCs that tell you not to go off the beaten path, otherwise, like, spooky monsters will attack you, and if you don't listen to them and don't stay on the road, these super scary looking giant monsters just start bum rushing you and proceed to kill all of your monsters pretty much in one shots, and it kind of just makes you feel like you are living in this world where monsters are really the ones in control, especially if you go venture out in the wild when you are not prepared. And every Pokemon game or Pokemon Light game I have played just feels like a normal world with Pokemon, you know, thrown in it. But this is the first game that I have played that really made me feel like, oh crap, I am in a world filled with monsters. And, you know, I can take advantage of them in some ways, but I still have to respect them and, you know, respect the fact that they could just murder me outright. <laughs> And when you die in this game, it brings you back to like a nearby point and it restores all of your monsters health, but you lose all of your items. So any packs you bought to try to catch new monsters or like health potion items, they're all gone. And obviously, because it is a monster taming game, a really important aspect of the game is the monster design. And the monsters in this game are overall really interesting. There are some more just generic looking monsters, but there are some also really cool and unique ones. And I think it works in this game because the idea is that there's just all these different types of monsters and they just wreck stuff. So it's not like Pokemon where everything kind of has to be grounded in reality. There is some crazy stuff in this game. There are five different types of monsters, and every move is also one of those types as well, and it kind of just works like a big looping game of rock, paper, scissors in terms of what's effective against certain things and what's not effective against certain things. And also, speaking of the monsters, there are five really different cool starters that go along with the five different types of monsters in the game. The combat in this game is overall pretty similar to what you would expect in a monster taming game. The biggest differences are that one, you get to have a max party size of eight monsters in your party at one time. Uh, two, you actually get to choose which of those monsters you start the fight with every time you fight another monster. And three, there's also this kind of like combo meter that fills up 
the more you switch monsters in and out. And when you finally deal damage after, you know, switching out as long as none of your monsters died, it deals extra damage depending on how much of that meter is filled. And so I don't know how much, you know, of a gimmick it is versus how important it is. I kind of just felt like I was playing the game similar to how I would be playing Pokemon. So I didn't really, you know, take advantage of this too, too much. Um, but, you know, it's interesting that it's there and it makes it a little bit different. Also, another small thing is that when you kill a monster, all the monsters that you have gain XP unless you want to just turn that feature off in the settings, which you can. And also, I absolutely love that even if your monsters die, they still get experience. They don't get punished for dying like in other monster taming games. Another big feature with this game is breeding and fusing monsters. So apparently later in the game and something that'll be expanded on, you know, in future updates is that you can breed and fuse all of these monsters to get weird combinations of monsters that get unique moves and there could be like literally thousands of different combinations of these, you know, mutant monsters. And I think that's a really cool concept because in almost every single other monster taming game, if you say breed, you know, two Pokemon, you always just get the same Pokemon as one of the parents and you can have things like egg moves that spice things up but you know in this game there could be thousands of just different weird abominations of monsters and it really fits the theme of the game. There is also online multiplayer and online trading in the game, but I wasn't really able to try this out because I was playing the game when no one else was really playing, but I imagine it would at, at the very least be decent enough and it would be really interesting to try out all the different combinations of monsters you could have. Also, there's just a bunch of small things that this game does that I really, really like as someone that has kind of played Pokemon and a bunch of other monster taming games like Temtem. And firstly, the game is actually challenging, which is really nice. I mean, there's some boss fights that are like single high level monsters that fight really uniquely from each other and they make you actually think and they're just they're fun to fight and interesting. Uh, also you can find food sometimes in the world and you can use that to feed your main monster to heal him up a little bit which I thought was you know just kind of cool and there's not random encounters in this game instead there's actual monsters living in the overworld which really nails down the fact that you're just a human walking through this you know monster world and it makes it even more scary when there are super big monsters that you know are just going to completely screw you up. Also, almost everyone you talk to in this game says something either interesting about like the lore and the story or just gives you some actually useful tips that you might not have known previously. And I just have to say that again, the story in this game is really, really interesting and to me is most of the reason why I am absolutely loving this game. And like I said, I don't want to try to spoil too much because I want you guys to experience most of it for yourself, but just highly recommend, you know, it for the story uh, and try not to get too many things spoiled for you because it's you know even if there's not like super super crazy things uh it's just the vibes it gives off and just being in this dark world and seeing some of the things that would happen in a world that's just actually run by monsters is kind of insane the only feedback i would have is one there are a decent amount of bugs in this game and none of them are game breaking or anything but they can be annoying so like sometimes your map or bag ui can like stick over your game and you'll be controlling your character and the bag at the same time and they can kind of get you in some weird predicaments and just be a little annoying. Uh, also just sometimes it randomly starts raining for like two seconds and then it'll go away. Um, you know, and just other small bugs like that. But overall, the game is super fun and really promising for an early access game. I absolutely can't wait to see how this game keeps on being developed because as the time of recording this and with it coming out in early access, there's only about one third of the story out and only about one half of the map is accessible right now. And also, I just can't wait to see a bunch of the more features they add, especially like the end game content that supposedly is going to be there, you know, once they finish the rest of the story because I could see that being a ton of fun depending on how they do it. And so if you're a fan of monster taming games, I think you need to pick this up because I feel like I can't be the only person that has wanted a game like Pokemon but in a world that is a lot darker and more realistic and more just showing off that the monsters are the ones that rule the world. And so highly recommend it. Definitely pick it up if you're interested in these type of games. And if you enjoyed this video, then consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to see more content. I make about two to three gaming reviews a week just on a wide variety of games. So subscribe to see more in the future. And if you guys are having a great day today, I hope you continue having a great day. If you guys aren't having a great day, I hope you guys start having a great day. But either way, guys, I hope you guys have have a great rest of the day. See you guys next time.